As a kid, these scenes scared you in Jurassic Park. As an adult though, Jurassic Park is scary because of scenes like this. There is a kind of uh, um, immorality to creating something that already had its chance in, in evolution. It would be wrong to go back and bring dinosaurs back in real life. But he didn't just theorize on the dangers of resurrecting dinosaurs, but the dangers of our modern unrelenting progression. Progression isn't inherently dangerous. It could be marvelous. The danger of progression is we never stop to ask this question. Yeah, yeah, but your scientists were so preoccupied with whether or not they could, they didn't stop to think if they should. The problem is, much like these dreamers, scientists, and investors, we think we have everything under control. But it is this illusion of control we create for ourselves that leads to chaos. Jurassic Park starts with a clear warning about the danger of what the theme park is trying to do. There are two different forces set on reaping chaos, animal nature and human nature. One is the result of billions of years of evolution hardwired into the system. The other is the result of free will. Spielberg introduces us to the park's mastermind and driving force, a charismatic, confident John Hammond, who is completely oblivious to the danger of the two incoming forces. He's clearly good at what he does, since he is able to convince multiple experts to investigate his island with no idea what they are supposed to be investigating. He proceeds to masterfully set up his special guests to a breathtaking view of a herd of brachiosauruses. True to his character as a billionaire, Hammond is a visionary showman. After this, the esteemed guests are given a ride through their top-notch research facility. Up until this point, Hammond and his team have had complete control of the situation and everything has gone flawlessly. And this is when the tone of the movie changes. They're introduced to a hatching raptor, but this quickly terrifies Dr. Grant, despite the reassurances of the scientists, all while Hammond blindly plays with an incredibly dangerous animal he thinks he can control while ignoring the billions of years of evolution baked into his little pet. Listen, if there's one thing the history of evolution has taught us, it's that life will not be contained. Life breaks free, it expands to new territories, and it crashes through barriers painfully, maybe even dangerously, but... Uh, well, there it is. Despite the pushback from his esteemed guests, Hammond is still convinced they have everything under control. So convinced, he has even brought his grandchildren to the park. Kids! <laughs> Go away! <laughs> Get we miss you. <laughs> we love the uh, they were great. It's clear that the hubris of Hammond has blinded him to the awful reality that he and his team have far less under control than they think. They have a fragile computer system constantly teetering on collapse. They have poor infrastructure for a tropical storm, much less a hurricane. They have no backup power. Their doors have no safety mechanisms. They have a disgruntled employee driven by greed with no security protocols to stop him from wreaking havoc. And instead of animatronics that do exactly as they are told to, they have dozens of dangerous animals they barely understand, driven by a desire to eat, survive, and... It's John Hammond and his team of experts versus the forces of evolution combined with the bad side of human nature. I tell you, how many times we needed locking mechanisms on the vehicle Stop doors! Right. Their illusion of control is soon exposed, and what follows is chaos, destruction, and death. So how does this apply to us today? Well, in today's age, we are surrounded by an unrelenting stream of progress. We are constantly running at full speed into new procedures, policies, and technologies pretending that we know exactly what we are doing. Unfortunately for us, the signs of things falling apart could be subtle. Unlike in Jurassic Park, which takes hours, signs of falling apart can take years. As we abandon lifestyles and traditions older than civilization, we find ourselves more depressed. As we embrace new technologies never seen before, we find ourselves more isolated. The sad thing is, unlike John Hammond, we haven't learned our lesson. 
we're still trying to convince ourselves that we have everything under control. We haven't stopped to consider the important question. You know, you read what others had done and you, and you took the next step. You didn't earn the knowledge for yourselves, so you don't take any responsibility. You stood on the shoulders of geniuses uh, to accomplish something as fast as you could, and before you even knew what you had, you, you patented it and packaged it and slapped it on a plastic lunchbox, and now you're selling it. You want to sell it. Well, your scientists were so preoccupied with whether or not they could, they didn't stop to think if they should. 